I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in my own Nicaragua. We got a question from someone who said, boy, you know, if you don't speak the language, how do you even start to integrate as a local and start to become part of your community when living in Nicaragua? That's a great question, and certainly that is going to be a challenge, but I think it's not as bad as you may assume looking at it from the outside. But we're going to talk about that right after the book. My foot is starting to heal and hopefully by the weekend I will have a chance to go out and do some walking around. Maybe some light walking where I drive to some place so that I'm not pushing it too hard, but I am hoping to get out again pretty soon. It certainly feels a lot better than it has and I've taken this opportunity to get a bit of time working on a few different projects for the show and spending some more time with my kids playing some video games. We've especially been playing Dark Side Detective and Frog Detective, coincidentally both detective games, but absolutely quite different from each other except uh, maybe a lot more like than not check them out fun games to play with whether you have kids or are on your own anyway so what do you do to integrate into society in Nicaragua or pretty much anywhere right these things are going to carry over quite a bit if you don't speak the language Obviously, it should go without saying that by speaking the language, you're going to have a lot more opportunities to integrate. So get started. We say this in every video, right? Get started learning the language. Every little bit you learn is going to give you more opportunities to talk to people, to integrate, to understand what's going on, to just connect with your environment. So certainly get started with that journey as soon as you can. Don't let other things wait for it, but don't wait on it either. In all things that you're dealing with, one of the mistakes that people make routinely is delaying, whether it's delaying their research, delaying their, their flying down and initial investigation, delaying their moves, delaying starting to learn a language. There's always something you can be doing to be moving forward. And each of those things, you should be taking some action on. Now, I understand some people are like, well, I'm not gonna move down until I retire, that's five years away whatever there's still things you can be doing like learning the language so get started on that to sweet that's french by the way okay so assuming you really don't speak the language and you're struggling to learn but you've at least started one any little bit you can speak is going to act as an opener to introduce yourself to someone right so that could be part of your integration this whole like i'm struggling to learn the language so there's people who might be interested in helping you get there right there's also a number of people who speak English, so don't feel like you're just never going to be able to talk to anyone. Even here in Nicaragua, where English is not spoken very heavily, you're still going to find a good number of English speakers. It's not like there's none. So if you go out, especially if you go out to uh, places that are, are a few expats there and you're not the only ones, I'm not saying enclaves, I'm not saying all expats, I'm just saying that you're maybe not the only one, you're more likely to run into Nicaraguans who do speak English. So you'll probably make some English-speaking friends. It won't be you know, it, it won't be 10% of the people you meet, but it might be 5% of the people you meet. And uh, you'll be able to to just have those interactions that way. So that, that may just solve it for you in many cases. And they'll be able to help you move forward with Spanish as well. But there's also other tools you can use, right? Don't be afraid to go out and pull out your translator app, you know, you know, Google Translate or whatever, and start having conversations that way. Write things down. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're in person, you may be just going out and having a beer, watching a show. A lot of Nicaragua life takes place with really loud music. So conversations are pretty difficult anyway. Now, I know some people can pull it off. For me, even if it's in English, I can't hear anybody. So not speaking the language in a lot of situations has no impact on me. I hear nothing. So, I mean, I hear it, but it's just noise to me. So it doesn't matter in those cases. I'm just equally uh, disconnected. So in those cases, using uh, something like a Google Translate, but also using WhatsApp and methods like that, uh, Nika Abla, you can talk some other way and send messages and you have time to, to translate. And that's going to be a lot of your day. Just because you're out at a bar, yeah, it would be nice if you could just hang out and have conversations with people uh, the way, you know, as if you were a local. And that's unfortunate that you probably can't. But most of the day, you're not going to be sitting at a bar doing those things. You're going to be sending people messages. So even before we spoke Spanish, we would send messages to people all the time in Spanish. Make sure you're the one doing the translating. Don't make other people translate to English to accommodate you. 
I mean, it's gonna be more work. Let me tell you, over time, it gets a little bit annoying, but do everything in Spanish and as, you know, practice it, check what you're writing. It'll help you move forward with your Spanish. It'll still take a while. Learning a new language isn't a trivial thing, so I'm not trying to pretend that it is. It's a huge ordeal. I've been working on learning Spanish since 1990 and I've not gotten that far. And I've put in real effort. I mean, four years in school, I've, you know, Long before we were looking at moving, I was buying, you know, uh, uh, CDs and books and stuff to try to teach myself, and I just never could. I've been doing Duolingo for, I don't know, 11, 13 years or so. Unbelievable amount of time on that and other apps, and I still struggle to learn, and I speak it every day. It's, it, learning a language is hard. How people do it, I don't know, but I can't, right? But I do put in an effort, and it does make a really big difference, but you really don't have to get there. To, to be able to integrate. But even if you don't speak the language, and I know a lot of expats that don't speak Spanish or don't speak nearly as much as I do, who live here in Nicaragua, and they simply take and make an effort to go out and take part in activities going on around the community. Now, I'm gonna use Nicaragua as an example, but you can easily extrapolate this to whatever country you're looking at moving to, and it'll probably apply pretty well, unless you speak the language and then everything's just really easy. So here, for example, I often go out and participate participate in or watch parades, religious processions, uh, concert events, and other social activities that go on in the main square. We go out to the bars and cafes and restaurants and don't go to, you know, avoid expat places. That's one of the biggest secrets. As long as you're not in an expat enclave or going to just expat activities, and I'm not saying you can never do them, of course you can, but if you spend most of your time like looking for expat things, you're going to find yourself just kind of isolated as many people do because once you get into that pattern it feels really easy and then you do have a community to attach to the expat community and they're often very nice people doing interesting things with the same challenges as you hoping to find a community and it becomes a crutch and if you want to you know, integrate with the Nicaraguan community in this example, that crutch can be overwhelming because not just are you likely to lean on it and say, well, I want to go out, Gosh, the effort of going out and making new friends and, and dealing with it in Spanish is hard, but these friends speak English and we all have this shared experience, so it's really easy. Now, in some ways, that's great. You have a built-in, almost automatic group of friends that you're really going to enjoy and you're going to identify with and you're going to have a lot of shared experiences, but just enough different that it's really easy to make friends, right? This is something that if you've not moved around a lot, you may not be aware of. But if you uh, go out and find people who are a lot like you, but come from a different part of the country, you automatically have these like, oh, what's different between the places? And you have this just enough different in your experiences that it makes it really easy to have things to talk about because you have enough connection uh, to make it easy, but enough differences to have topics. It's one of the reasons that it's so nice going to England, at least back in the day when going to a pub was a normal thing. I know a lot of this is starting to go away, but I used to go to England and just go to a little pub in a little village, which I absolutely love, and immediately people would hear my accent and they'd wanna talk. They'd wanna talk politics and differences in language or culture, food or whatever between England and the United States because we spoke the same language. We had so many shared experiences, but so much was exotic that we always had something to talk about. There's always something that they're like, wait, it's like what, they do what? And I'm like, wait, you have this or you do that? And there's just always cool things to learn about each other really easily. And you'll find that in the expat community really easily. Now, to some degree, the same thing will happen with Nicaraguans. There's going to be always a topic to talk about because you're always going to be looking to learn more about Nicaragua and a huge number of Nicaraguans are going to be super interested about wherever you're from. It just doesn't matter where you're from or what language you speak. You represent a foreign experience and not very many Nicaraguans have an opportunity to travel outside the country. Not a lot of them don't even travel that much inside the country. So bringing a perspective from the outside world, while there's some Nicaraguans who are constantly interacting with foreigners, the majority or not, and especially if you live a little bit outside the tourist centers, you will have, you'll just be a super novelty. And that helps get you over the hump. And I think more than anything, the thing that makes it easy beyond that you want to integrate and beyond just that Nicaraguans, like many people, are just friendly and warm and welcoming, is that Nicaragua especially is a place where access to the outside world is very limited. There are very few countries that are actually essentially imprisoned in their own country. 
Every border is difficult for Nicaraguans to leave. Air flights are on airlines are very difficult for Nicaraguans to get. There's so many places that require a visa in the immediate vicinity that are very difficult or expensive to obtain. And so Nicaraguans very often don't travel outside their local areas or at least their own country. And those who do travel very often are limited to Central America, meaning the CA4 and Costa Rica. Costa Rica is still expensive and difficult for Nicaraguans, but it's so close that they do often go there. But that's about it. Even going to Panama tends to border on the exotic. Going to Mexico, definitely into the exotic. Getting into US, Canada, Colombia, anything like that is really far afield. Doable. You'll find people who do it. If anything, Europe is more accessible and more often accessed than many of those places. If you're looking for where Nicaraguans are most likely to have experience, the immediacy of Central America, people make an effort to go to the US when they can, and places like Spain, Germany, France, those tend to get a certain amount, and for some reason, Norway. <laughs> for real. Lots of people go to Norway and Switzerland. Uh, but that's a very small percentage. So just by being an expat, if you get out of the tourist centers, if you're not in Granada, not in uh, in the tourist or the, the expat areas of Managua, not in San Juan del Sur, maybe not in Ometepe, get into any of the other places, and you're going to represent a novelty. And when you have a warm and friendly and welcoming environment and you add a foreign novelty, you get an automatic connection. People want to get to know you. You're a point of interest. People don't come and go in society the way that they do in the United States, for example. In the U.S., if you lived in a small village, so pretty much anywhere in the U.S., you're always going to have at least Americans from far afield in the United States passing through. That'll be normal. But if you're here in Nicaragua, even other Nicaraguans coming to your community isn't that common. And then to have someone from another country living in your community and going out to your local bar, doing local things, hanging out and watching her local band participating in your local parades, this is really unheard of under normal circumstances. It doesn't require 99% of the population to want to hang out with you for you to be able to integrate. It requires 1% or 2% of people that you meet being like, wow, you're a point of interest. Let's get to know each other and hang out. It's, it's easy to think, kind of like jobs. We often think of, of careers as, well, I need to be prepared to take any job that's out there, as many as possible. But you only need one. You only need the job that you're going to take, the good one. The rest, it doesn't matter how well you are or aren't prepared for the jobs you aren't working. And it doesn't matter how many friends you could have made. It only matters that you make enough friends that you have people to spend your time with. And so that you're a novelty and that a certain percentage of people are going to be really excited to get to know you. Some of them in Spanish, some of them in English, you're probably pretty well set. Is it a challenge? Absolutely. You're going to be having to work harder than you would somewhere else, at least to maintain friendships and do activities. But to actually meet people, for us, we found that meeting people here is dramatically easier than it ever was in the United States. This may not be the experience that everyone's going to share, but I grew up in Western New York. Meeting new people was difficult. Meeting people we already knew, we had loads of great friends, right? I grew up there. So all my old friends from when I was a kid, yeah, we're all well-connected. We get along great. But going out and meeting new people normally involved meeting friends of friends. That's normally how we met new people, except for rare occasion. When I moved to Texas, it was much harder. It was very, very uh, more of a barrier. So you go to a bar, you don't just randomly talk to people. You can, but it's harder, right? In Nicaragua, there's so much more reason to randomly talk to people, and it's so much more expected, and especially if you're a foreigner, it's just going to happen, that we have found that it really has been much easier to make initial connections, to get introduced, to just have a reason to say hi, to get to know someone, and, and Nicaraguans will all the time, now I understand, I'm a YouTuber, it's different, but lots and lots of people will just come up to me and introduce themselves, be like, I'm really interested in getting to know you, or I just want to say hi and introduce myself, whatever. And it's, it's so easy. I never had that in Texas. I was also not a YouTuber there. I understand it's a different thing. But even when it's not someone who recognizes me from YouTube, the chances that someone is going to be sitting next to me at a concert, and I just mean at a bar, right? Not like a concert concert. I'm talking like they're at the table next to me. They'll lean over and be like, hey, where are you from? You know, and they'll, they'll want to start a conversation, maybe in English, maybe in Spanish. And it just, it just happens. And you start talking. And they'll be like, you know, sometimes when I'm out walking, filming in neighborhoods, if I did that in the United States, people would never talk to me unless they were threatening me. Hey, get out of here. I don't want someone on my sidewalk. This is a public sidewalk. I don't care. I'll shoot you anyway. Right? I'll drag you onto my porch. Right? That's about 
what a conversation would be like if there was one. But 99% of the time, there'll be no conversation at all. People will just avoid you or ignore you. But if you're in Nicaragua, you watch my videos, people are saying hi to me all the time. Sometimes people want to show me things in their homes. Sometimes people want to come talk to me. And a lot of times people talk to me and, I, and the camera dies and I can't record it or, or people aren't necessarily comfortable being on camera, but they do want to have a conversation. So I've many times been out walking and had someone come up, introduce themselves, give me their WhatsApp number, be like, hey, let's hang out. Hey, call me sometime, right? Like it's a normal thing that you would not expect to experience in the United States in the same way. And so that can be all it takes. Go out and walk around your neighborhood, walk around a different neighborhood, uh, go out to your local bar, go out to your local restaurants, hang out. You're probably going to make friends. Be open to talking to people. Don't close yourself off. Don't make yourself seem unapproachable. And that may make all the difference. Similarly, activities like going out dancing, it's very easy to just go meet people and dance with new people. Again, not like the United States where you generally take the people you're going to dance with with you. You can do that, but you can also just go out to clubs where people are dancing and meet new people. Very, very open to people making new connections. That's just how life is in Nicaragua and a lot of countries. It's unique in Western Europe and the United States how difficult it is to actually meet new people. That's kind of a scary, uh, high friction experience, but much of the world in Nicaragua is an extreme in the other case that it's a very low friction experience. Another example of how you can get to know people is a little bit of travel. Not a lot of Nicaraguans travel around Nicaragua. Some definitely do, but a lot do not. But if you go out, so I live in Leon, if I'm going to go to Matagalpa for the weekend, right? I can go to Matagalpa and if I go to a club there or restaurant there, you know, bar, whatever, I can go participate in things and very often people will introduce themselves there and I'll end up with uh, connections in other places. And, and by doing that, you tend to do different activities when you're visiting a city. So by just visiting other places, you're likely to create connections. Or like we did in a video a little over a year ago, we went to Hinotega, ended up at uh, Lago Apanas, and there was a huge outdoor uh, racing event. Really easy to just hang out with people, start conversations, get have a, a topic, uh, an area of interest, assuming you're interested in mud racing in that particular instance, but you could go out and find people who are fishing. As an example, you could go out and talk to the fishermen. You really can engage with people in ways that you would feel uncomfortable doing other places. And to some degree, it's simply because it's a different culture. In other ways, it's simply because you're a foreigner in a new place. People understand that you want to engage with them. They're very open to that. I'm not saying every single person, but way more than you would expect. You really can be pretty comfortable making friends and just talking to people, introducing yourself, say hi, it's amazing how fluid it is. I understand that that sounds really scary. And for someone like me, it's always pretty scary. Like I just grew up in a world where you don't just go out and introduce yourself to people, but you really can. And that's what people do here. And it works. Having lived here for years, we just keep making friends and it's so easy. And I'm not saying that we don't make friends in the United States and that it's hard, but it's just more challenging to have that initial conversation. Of course, in the United States, once you've had that initial conversation, people are super friendly and warm and you become friends really quickly. It's just that initial having a conversation. And of course, in the United States, you're much more likely, people don't normally think about this, but you're much more likely to hop in a car and move between places. Like we talk about that, but that means during that time, you're not making friends. In Nicaragua, when you go between places, a lot of times you're on foot. There's a lot more of just being outside and interfacing with people. It's a normal part of life. Whereas in the United States, because of the distances, the changes in temperatures, the hauling things around, all kinds of different factors, you get into cars, roll up your windows, and you're closed off. And cars move faster. Here, cars move so slow, you can make friends out the windows you drive by. All right, that's an exaggeration, but you get the point. You often are living outside, and especially if you're in a city or a small village, your house might be very open. Where we are, we're less so, but we have so much traffic here that new people are coming all the time. But if you're in a lot of places, uh, like when we lived in La Borrio, you just step outside, you hear some music, you stop by, look in the neighbors, they come out and they introduce themselves to you, right? You'll end up getting to know people in your community. We got to know the people across the street, the people next door, the people around the corner. Someone would be out repairing a chair, you talk to them. Someone has a cute dog, you talk to them. Someone is uh, going out to um, do a, a festival event, right? You talk to them. Kids will come up and talk to you because they're super interested or they want to practice their English. There's all kinds of reasons that people are going to reach out and want to connect with you. Just be open to that and it's probably going to happen on its own. Of course, if you go get a homestead, you live on a farm, you're super far away from everybody, you don't have any interactions, you never leave home, you wouldn't meet new people anywhere. But if you're going out and making any kind of effort and you really leave yourself open to, you know, whatever effort it's going to take to get to meet new people, I think you're going to find that it's actually just very natural and easy in ways that 
Once it happens, you'll realize that it feels natural and easy, but when we're talking about it, like right now, it's gonna sound like, I don't feel like that's really gonna happen, or I feel like that's a really difficult thing. And of course, you are also going to have certain interactions under many circumstances, not everybody, where you may be uh, investing and running a business. Well, you're gonna get to know a lot of people that you work with. That was a huge impetus for us meeting a lot of people. We had employees right from the get-go and some of them are still really good friends and we talk to them all the time. Um, our very first employee that I ever interacted with in the company, I spoke to her, I mean, that's we're talking almost four years ago, we've spoken within the last hour, right? That's a normal thing. And they're gonna introduce you to their friends, their family, other employees. Now that's if you're an employer. What if you are having a house work done? You're, at some point, you're going to meet the handyman. You're going to meet the air conditioning guy. You're going to meet, uh, you're going to hire a cleaner, hire a cook, something. You're going to interact with people in a lot of cases, not everyone, but a lot of cases. And often there, that's going to be another into another uh, point of contact with the community. And, and you can become part of, you know, friends or, or family with, with those people. And it's just, there's so many places where you tend to interact with people more in Nicaragua, just because of the economy, because of the culture, whatever. I don't think it, it presents the challenge that it feels like. And when you hear, normally, always an exception, when you hear people saying that they failed to make connections in their community, they failed to integrate, uh, normally, it's people who haven't been here very long, first of all, it's, it's rare that that goes on for a long time. Two, they're, they're somehow in an enclave or otherwise isolated to where it's easy to look at it and say, okay, what opportunities did you give for people to talk to you? Okay, you're very isolated. I can see why. That would take a really long time. Um, are, they, are they in an area where people just treat them as foreigners, right? If you're in San Juan del Sur or you're in Granada, you're in Ometepe, it's really easy for the locals to be like, yeah, there's just loads of foreigners here. They do their own thing. There's, we're, we're not interested in them because they're, they're a never-ending stream and they leave frequently. That makes it much harder. But if you live somewhere else in the country, Hinotepe, Leon, Chinandega, Hinotepe, uh, Hinotega, Matagalpa, Esteli, Buaco, Huigalpa, Messiah, right? The, the, the foreigners are not coming and going. We're not transient in the same way. Someone is, but a lot of us are here for the long haul. That's where the long haulers tend to be. And the short timers tend to be in the tourist location, sometimes because they're tourists, sometimes because they are testing the waters of a new place and they're not really making that emotional investment. They may be making a financial one, but they're not as likely making an emotional investment. And of course some are, but they're in a pool of people who are not. And so it's very hard for a Nicaraguan to identify who's serious and who's not, or who's transient and who's not. And in other areas like here in Leon, nearly everyone we know and that is part of the expat community we're all here for the, all of us have years under our belts. All of us are continuing to invest. All of us are planning on staying and making big commitments to staying. And while we could leave, it's not very likely. And the ones that are here, the average time is many years. So we have our own groups of friends that really develop because of that. And so you know, with a little bit of effort, a little bit of openness, a little bit of willingness, uh, and a little bit of it, it's just naturally going to happen. Uh, and a little bit of avoiding really, I hope obvious or seemingly obvious situations where you'll be seen as a high cost, low payoff in friendship, right? Meaning it's hard to approach you because you're in an enclave. You're, you're not in an area where you're isolated and, and need friends. A bird just flew at me and you are very likely to move on. So putting in a bunch of effort to become friends with someone who's only there for six months or two years is hard. As long as you do those things, I know it's a bunch of, but it's a bunch of really easy, mostly obvious things. I think community integration is going to come, maybe not in your first six months, but relatively quickly and more and more over time, especially if that's your goal. The fact that you ask the question, the fact that you are concerned about it, it, it's one of those situations where the act of being concerned about it will solve the problem. And if your question was, how can I avoid integrating? How can I hide from the locals and just be around expats? The act of asking that question would also naturally provide the solution to that, if that's what you wanted. These are things that are so easily manipulated and controlled by you that the desire for it to happen is practically enough to make sure that it does. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. We have our membership. You're welcome to sign up for that as well. We always appreciate that. Uh, watch our video. Sign up for Nika Abla so you can have real-time conversations with me and other people from the community. We do have an open group for everyone from the community to join or people that even aren't watching YouTube, uh, but we also have private groups for those members. Get down and ask your questions. That's how we know what people need us to talk about. And remember, on Thursdays, we try 
try to do a live stream. So tune in for that. Thanks for joining me. I'll see all of you tomorrow.